let's bring the conversation back home as the Nigeria Labour Congress and its Labour counterpart, Trade Union Congress, begin a nationwide worker strike. Many commercial activities are said to have been disrupted, while some official duties have been grounded, while in some areas there was low compliance with the industrial action. Our rise correspondent Godfrey Eshomoge joins us live from Abuja now to give us an update on the nationwide industrial action declared by the Nigeria Labour Congress. It's great to have you on the programme uh, Godfrey, now let's get straight into it. Any new uh, updates, uh, any new activity that you're seeing from the ground in Abuja? Well, there's been no new activity. It's a fine, sunny afternoon in Abuja. Of course, uh, uh, we expected a, a shutdown, nationwide shutdown of economic activities under the federal secretariat where workers from all across the FCT converge to perform their you know, national duty, if you like. But here we are having, we are witnessing next to zero compliance to the call for a nationwide strike by the labor unions. What we are having here today are workers coming to work like they do on a normal day where there's no, there are no proposed or planned strikes. So we can say, well, the call for strike hasn't yielded the desired impact. Of course, we know there's been a, 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 a subsisting court order barring the Labour Congress, the Labour unions, that was on the day, that's a, a court order dated the 10th of November, barring the Labour unions from going to strike on uh, the issue that uh, transpired in Imo. So we recall that the labor unions have faulted what they call the criminal silence of the federal government respect to the incidents in Imo state where uh, the president of National Labor Congress, Joe Ajero, was assaulted. So that has been the reason given for their call for a nationwide strike to seek justice and to ask that those who were responsible for that incident in Imo state are investigated and brought to book. Of course, not all workers at the federal sector here in Abuja believe that what the labor unions are, uh, are seeking from the government or, and calling for a nationwide strike was, was uh, warranted. In their view, there are more pressing issues relating to the workforce, Nigerian labor, uh, Nigerian workforce that should call for a strike, not the incident of an uh, uh, emo state, which I say is a, is, a, is a personal issue that should call for a nationwide strike or a nationwide sh shutdown. They are, in their view, they are saying it is overreaching of the labor unions to call for a strike on account of what happened in emo state. Someone even said it is part of the hazards of being a labor union leader to be beaten in the course of uh, his activity. So he said calling for a nationwide strike was uncalled for, that the labor unions are even uh, guilty of double standards, that issues that would have warranted a strike, they never did go ahead to uh, embark on a strike, like the uh, increase in fuel price, for instance, and removal of fuel subsidy. He said those are issues that would have warranted a nationwide strike, but those issues they didn't see the labor unions go on strike, that they should uh, um, you know, focus on more serious issues rather than what they are called for strike for today. Well said, Godfrey. <clears throat> Briefly, if you can, if this strike action that was called um, for was, more, was centered on the original matter, which was the palliatives or the removal of fuel subsidy, do you think that the turnout or the compliance would have been much higher as opposed to what it, the focus is right now? I, I think I pretty much, pretty, I'm pretty confident that, confident that it should be much higher because people are feeling the pinch of the petrol subsidy removal. And the palliative that should be coming, I, I, I think uh, it's nowhere to be seen for the time being because not, not many Nigerians have uh, attested to the fact that they've received any form of palliatives from the federal government or state government to be precise. So if it were for the economic, seeming economic hardship in the country, uh, well, every worker will be willing to want to sacrifice, you know, to go on strike, to press home their grievances and to have the government do something to ease their suffering as it is. But for that, which the labor unions are pressing for, a nationwide strike, which is that of a general incident in Imo State, yeah. they are seeming to say that is uncalled for. All right, Godfrey Eshomage, a rise correspondent, live from Abuja. Thank you so much for that update. Now, from Abuja, we go to Lagos, where a rise senior correspondent, Tokumbo Oyetunji, is at the Matala Mohammed International Airport. Uh, Tokumbo, tell us what the situation is where you are. Of course, we've just heard that low compliance in Abuja. What is the situation in Lagos? 
Thank you very much, uh, Mbai, for coming to us here at the Lagos Airport, Muritala Mohammed International Airport, really. We are actually at the Terminal 2 of the local uh, uh, airport known as uh, the Bicotney uh, End. We are inside the, arri the arrival and departure lounge. I mean, if the compliance in Nabuja is low level, what we we'll see here does not show any compliance at all. I've been in this uh, hall, terminal hall, for close to two hours, and I've uh, uh, been seeing people coming in and moving out. Flights been uh, uh, dispatched from here. If we just, my cameraman will just take us to the information screen right at the board here. You could, it, it says it all. You know, from early in the day. So many flights have been dispatched from here and I've not heard of any flight being cancelled. I think maybe there has been a delay or so. I can't confirm, but there has not been any cancellation from here, meaning that the strike called by the labor centers here in Nigeria is having no effect here at Muritala Mohamed uh, uh, Terminal 2, local Terminal 2 of the Muritala Mohamed International Airport here in Lagos, Mumbai. Well, thank you so much, Arai Senior Correspondent Tokumbo Yetinji for that update. We appreciate your time here on Newsday.